For the past few years, the Detroit Auto Show has been a dead zone for sports cars, but according to 2014, it looks like the future is pretty bright. We've got the guys from Jalopnik on the couch today on Afterdrive, and we're going to be talking about the cars that we saw in Detroit that we think are going to be the cars that you're going to be talking about now and in the years ahead. That's today on Afterdrive. <laughs> Since the crash of 2008 and 9, the auto industry has been a little bit sexless and joyless, but today in Detroit, things are much, much better. And we've got the guys from Jalopnik to talk about that. Yes, Matt Hardigree, Editor-in-Chief, and Travis Akulski back in that seat. Yes. Deputy Editor. <laughs> Deputy Editor, yes. <laughs> Sorry. That's a, Thanks. It's the second Thanks. Old West reference this week on Drive. Great. Great job. So we've... We, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Um, we went to uh, the Detroit Auto Show this week, and we saw a bunch of cars, right? And uh, yes. at least ten. At least ten, and it, while it felt like a more subdued place than it was in, in the heyday a few years ago, like way, like ten years ago, mm -hmm. when it was a lot of you know, when you know Chrysler had or Ram trucks had steers in the street, you know, oh, when jeeps were crashing, jeeps were crashing glass the window, walls, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, that all that stuff is gone, and what we're left with is just some kind of cool stuff, and that's <laughs> been—it's like the cool stuff show. I mean, it, right. does that make any sense? Is that you guys get a different feeling? No, it does. I mean, in 2000, so pre carpocalypse pre-recession, 2006, 2007, they had all sorts of money, and they were just trying to prove to people that they were building fun cars that you cared about. And then from 2008 to 2011, they had to prove why they needed to exist. And a sports car does not prove why you need to exist. You know, it doesn't prove that you're going to make money. It doesn't make investors feel better. And so it was focused externally. And now... These car companies can kind of afford to, again, you know, the ones who made it, not everyone made it, there's no Mitsubishi here, you know, there, there are all sorts, there's no Suzuki, yeah. uh, but the ones who actually survived can then, again, sort of breathe and say, okay, we, we've lived, now here's what we're going to do to make you interested in us again. And so that was a nice change. Um, certainly the booze got a little bit better this year, all, <laughs> all sorts true. of incremental improvements. Well, I mean, do you think they were self-conscious about be having too much fun while the economy was tanking also? I think, well, they were also tanking at the same time. Well, so they were point. part of the economy that was tanking. So having all the pomp and circumstance of, you know, a parade of cars coming down into what, 696 into Detroit yeah. just doesn't work. It wouldn't have, it it would have been a bad look. It would have been a bad look to have a government bailout and then a trailer carrying a Corvette Z06 coming into town. <laughs> right. <laughs> so they had to be quieter those years, too, to prove that they deserve to still be around. And right. now we're probably going to see, I think, more pomp and circumstance return over the next couple of years. So obviously, like, the big mainstream story was the Ford F-150. Yeah, great yes. sports car. Dropped 700 pounds, right. aluminum body panels. Power it's to weight. It, it, it's, it's, basically, turbo motor. it's got a turbo motor. It's basically a 7 yeah. at this point. <laughs> a modern 7 with a, with a right. truck bed. It's a 7. You can park a 7 in the back of That's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah, or a caterum. That just so, I mean, we're... well, I know, but just to, you know, it's an ID that we need to do. Okay. Just to make sure everybody knows. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 apologize. No, but you're right. It is, it, that, but that was the story. It was about, like, the most popular vehicle in the country mm -hmm. losing 700 pounds and, you know, becoming a different kind of thing. So, right. um, it, that, that didn't, wasn't really sexy, though. It wasn't a lot, you know, like, didn't get a lot of, uh, we, like, we don't care that much. I mean, I in the industry, the industry. No, uh, readers of Jalotnik's Truck Yeah, Truck Blog care very much. Um, the average yes. sports car enthusiast, probably not. Right. Well, those that have to tow a sports car, though, yeah. they might care. People towing things. Yes, if you're towing yeah. things. Like <laughs> sports cars. Like sports things. cars, yeah. All like right. a new Mustang. You want to tow a new Mustang, you got a 401F. Right. Yeah. But the sports car lineup was stellar, mm. if not mind-blowing, right? Because there were no, like, you know, crazy, really high-end co uh, concept cars like in the past. But there right. were some really cool lower-end concept cars that bode well for 
you know, more sports cars than we might actually like to drive. Well, mm -hmm. that's the best thing about post-recession thinking is that pre-recession, you're like, let's show a concept for a car that's made of rockets and gold <laughs> because who cares? I mean, pets, we've all got pets.com stock burning a hole in our pockets, whatever, you know, mortgage, our mortgages are basically free. And, and that's, that's not America now. And, and now America is, we can have fun, but it has to be affordable. And so the BRZ led with that. And it was, and I think the Miata, you know, sadly, the Miata seemed like a great idea and it was, a, it was a great big seller, but no one else was really equipped to build that and no one was really flexible enough to build a Miata. So we only had the Miata in that space for so long. But now we have Kia, like Kia couldn't have built, Kia was building a, a rebodied Lotus Elan, which would be kind of great to have, but we yeah. were never ever gonna get because of safety regulations. Right. But, but now everyone can look at a BRZ and go, Maybe we can do that. Maybe yeah. maybe Kia can build a BRZ fighter. Maybe Toyota can build a super again like they used to. You know, it's interesting you should mention the recession because when the Miata came out, we were pulling out of a recession too. And it was a cheap sports car mm -hmm. at a time when we wanted cheap sports cars. Um, and now we've got something like the Kia GT4 Stinger, right? Which is right. a concept car, but y you know that's something that they can build tomorrow. Um, it's in the FT86 BRZ mold, and you know, what do you? I mean, what do you think of that design-wise? I mean, it's a good-looking car. It's actually reminiscent of. I found a couple other concept cars that have come out. The Breton Mantide, which the front end's got the stacked headlights, same sort of thing, narrow grille opening. And there's also. What was that Volkswagen one? So what is that called? Oh, I can't remember what it's called. It's a yellow Volkswagen yeah. concept. It looks it looks it, eerily similar, oh. actually. Exactly. It's got blacked-out A pillars. It's got a Floating windshield. From about into, yeah, like five, ten, four or five years ago, six years five, ago? Five, six, ten years 17 ago. 17 years ago, 36 <laughs> years ago. It's well, I, we'll find a picture of them and put yeah. it up. But yeah, that's that. Yeah, it it's was the same like sort that. of idea, but I think it's a very good looking. It's aggressive. But, and it's, it's the only problem I have with it is that Kia grill because it has to look like a Kia. But shark it's not, nose. It's got shark, shark nose, tiger nose, tiger shark, tiger shark nose. Tiger shark nose. But, but, but very cool. So 350 horsepower, turbocharged two liter. Mm -hmm. Um, rear drive, 2,800 pounds. It's right in the wheelhouse, except with 150 more horsepower than the BRZ. Yeah, that's so, just, it sounds like a great recipe, doesn't good, it? Good things. And also, I think and you have an article going up in Jalopnik uh, this week that talks about an interview with the designer and, and pointing out that it's not just a Genesis. Because the Genesis hasn't really been a hit. It has a little bit too much of Hyundai's weird steering. And yeah. like, I, I don't like the clutch. And you it's, know, heavy, I, it's a heavy car. It's a heavy car. And it's a good car. Like the Genesis is great, but we begged kind of for Hyundai to build the Genesis. And then it came out and we were like, no, oh, thanks. Well, you know, uh, it's like my grandma. Like, I'd be like, grandma, I want meatloaf tonight. And then she would make it and I'd be like, I ordered pizza. Um, and that's what happened with the BRZ. The BRZ is our pizza it's to my pizza, grandma's yeah. meatloaf. Um, but uh, this car is supposed to be lighter and smaller. And, and so I think people who just think rebadged Genesis or, or maybe hopefully they're, they're not they're not correct hopefully it is a little bit lighter and i would take a i mean more horsepower is great but i, mm -hmm. I think the the problem with more grip we're adding bigger tires to cars you need more horsepower and i think what makes the brz fun is that it has a little bit less grip so we can get away with a little bit less horsepower and right. if it's on that side yeah. of it and they let genesis be big brother and be a little bit tougher you know they can hopefully price it lower too and, and that's obviously if they speculatively build it blah 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 yeah. that whole you know will they won't they well, game th that's the thing right i mean that's the thing that's a little bit tedious by now where they just say we might build it if you <laughs> tell like us it, what you tell think. us what you think and it's like just, just say you're gonna build it you know problem is you know, and not to go into the weeds on this, but it's really low. I don't know if that's going to make it through pedestrian safety standards. Oh, no, 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 no. way. So they're going to have to raise the hood. They're going to have to do something. And hopefully it doesn't ruin that design, but it's pretty nice. But Kia's all look good. I mean, the, the what is it, Peter Schreier who's doing it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah Peter yeah. Schreier, they, they do great work. Formerly I mean, the, of, uh, of uh, uh, Audi. Right? Yeah, of Audi, yeah, and a bunch of other great cars that everyone loves. And like the Kia, like the Kia Forte Coupe is actually a really good looking car. Yeah. Like I'm not like a, like no one gets excited about the Kia Forte Coupe. I'm sure there's one commenter who's going to be like, <laughs> Kia Forte Coupe 996 who loves it. But it's actually a really, when you see one on the street, you have to go, yeah, they build it. That's a yeah. great looking car. And it's a car that looks more than it costs. Absolutely. So that's something, for sure. that's for sure. All right, so definitely that. And we're going to get to the Corvette Z06 in a little bit. So that's okay. a, you know, obviously we got to talk about that. But let's just stick with the smaller, lighter sports cars. I mean, another one? So Nissan, so I, I didn't know Nissan was going to do this. This is before, we none of us did. This is before the press conference. And I saw Peter Brock, right, from BRZ yeah. Racing, right, the famous... Race team uh, had the 510 and the, the Z back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And 
I, the only reason I know him, and not to be a dickhead mm, name dropper, but right. it's because Jalopnik had voted the, his 510 oh, yeah, race car right. like the coolest car, and we started emailing. Um, was that, the, well, there was a reader thing, right? Yeah, was yeah, it? well, Alex Lloyd had driven the car, and he was yes. doing his best uh, of, oh, no, it wasn't. It was for, we put the car in Forza Horizon. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, Download exactly. the DLC today, yeah. Exactly. Um, and that was my first uh, AFX track, too, was the, uh, the BRZ. It came with the 510 and the Z car that uh, Johnny Morton, John Morton. Uh, Johnny, you're on, you're on a, Johnny, you're on a nickname basis. Johnny, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> John Morton um, back in 70, right. 70, right? 70, 71. Anyway, so I saw him walking around, and, and he was wearing a Nissan badge. And I said, so, Peter, you're wearing a Nissan Motors badge. Are you guys doing something over there? And he said, well, I can't talk about it, but you're going to have to come and find out. And I go over, it, and it's the, I, that IDX Nismo from concept Tokyo. from Tokyo. It looks yeah. like a kind of futuristic 510. It's gorgeous. Wasn't right. It? Wasn't it awesome? It's I thought the, it was Best awesome. looking car at the show, really. I think. So cool. I love that thing. Even, well, even the other one that wasn't the, the free flow, the IDX free flow. Free flow. Yeah. That one's like the little center at exhaust. The denim, it had a denim interior. Oh my God. It was like a, it like a Levi's Gremlin. <laughs> yeah, it was like a Levi's Gremlin, right, from the 70s. <laughs> but better, because it wasn't that. But what's, <laughs> and, and then all of a sudden, they're like, oh yeah, by the way, yeah, we're going to build one of these. Yeah. It was like, oh God, really? It better That's not be a cool. CVT hybrid. <laughs> well, all right. But the CVT, well, but here's the thing, right? Yeah. So right now, the BRZ is like a low volume car. Mm -hmm. The thing about the Datsun 510 in the beginning, back, you know, 25, well, 25, 45 years ago, was that it was not a volume car. It was, it, you know, it was a, a, basically an economy car that drove like a sports car without too much messing with it. That's the kind of thing you need now, is like, if these guys want this model to succeed, mm -hmm. it would be cool to have a car that'll sell more than 10,000 a year, right? But would they still build a small rear drive coupe thing, because I think the car that's most liked out in the market now is probably the Mazda 3. Okay. Because that's a really fun to drive little sporty car, but it's still a front wheel drive car. If you're going to find a market for a small rear wheel drive car like that, that you're going to sell enough to make it worthwhile, I really hope you could. But. Well, here, here's my thinking. This is a crazy conspiracy theory I just thought of while I was okay. listening to Travis talk. <laughs> A new Z is coming out. The current Z, the little big, you know, people like it. That's a rear-wheel drive platform. Mm -hmm. Apparently, the next Z is going to go turbo, and it might be a little bit smaller. Um, Ooh, what if point. they shared? They, you only have to build one rear-wheel drive architecture. I mean, freaking GM puts a G8. I mean, the, a Camaro is basically a full-size, which is what they're going to try to undo, but it's a full-size architecture. Yeah. You can take a coupe architecture and make it... For a small, coupe kind of car, I think that's fine. And, and if they make it, you know, not perform quite in the same level, but, you know, CVT, I'm fine. If they want to make a manual, if they make a manual version and they also make a CVT version, yeah. not my preference, but that's right. fine. Whatever. Right. I don't Subaru's care. Subaru's doing it. Everyone's doing it. Yeah, it's, just give into it. Yeah. Just hope they make better ones. But you're right. But Kia's doing the same thing. I mean, the, you know, the, the Genesis architecture is a, basically a full-size or mid-size architecture. And then you, you pull it down and you've got the, uh, the Stinger. Nissan could do the same thing. That's a very uh, strong rumor mill kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, I just made that yeah. up, too, so, so believe that. And I then, believe it. The other thing that I think that people need to know about the IDX is that it's Latin. IDX is 510 in Roman numerals. There you go. Which Wait, I think what? a lot of people don't know. It really is? Yeah, it really is. Oh, I didn't know that. That's great. Wow. See, I, that's I didn't secret take Latin. knowledge. The more you know. Da, na, na. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, Thanks, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> so those two... Um, those two to me, were the cars the most get excited about because they're affordable, or at least the model that they're showing. The, it's a 30,000 un and under, probably mm. 25 to 30, maybe even 20 to 30, but probably more like 10 to 12. <laughs> you could say any number. It's, it's a lower, let's say go lower. Say any number, right. Um, but those are the cars that people might be able to afford that we could actually see being fun to drive, rear drive, li mm -hmm. lightweight, all the things we've always wanted, well, more of. But they aren't confirmed. Like, if you want to look at a car that's been built, let's maybe do the that. WRX STI. That's a fun. That looks like a fun car. Well, let's talk about that. Okay, then. let's talk about that. Okay, car. you tell me a few things about that. <laughs> uh, it's a carryover drivetrain, so six-speed manual, two and a half liter turbo four. I think it's 300 horsepower still, 300 pound-feet. Uh, but it's still got the torque vectoring diff from the regular WRX. It's got a big wing. Big wing. It comes in blue with gold wheels. If you want to buy one of the first ones, that's really all I got. But it was made me really excited. 
It was nice to see that there. Yes. I, and I have to say, I was so excited about the other things, I actually didn't go buy Subaru. See, I... And I should have. I know I should have, but I didn't. I went, I went over there. I talked to him for a while. I found out, like we talked about, the, so the hubs are the same now in the WRX and the new STI. Yes. So you can switch, you the, can wheels switch the wheels out, which is finally people won't be upset about that because I think the Naziok forums have a whole thing dedicated to that. <laughs> it's all the wheel hub. The wheel right. hub. Uh, but didn't we break that news right I here? I think we did. Yeah, that was the tire, sponsored by Tire Rack, isn't it? We said that? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, Breaking news. But I think that that car looks much better than the WRX. It's still a little boring, but I think it's going to drive... Didn't, and the wideness Excellent. really yes. uh, res resolve that style. Yes. I, I agree with you now that the WRX doesn't All right, like well, we had to talk about it, yes. so... Um, there you go. I don't know, that, that's, that's important. Okay, but also, more expensive than the Kia or the Nissan is what BMW did, is the 2 Series. Yeah. So we get the 2 Series, the M235i, mm -hmm. and it's really kind of just like the 235is, right? Because it's yes. not a real yeah. M car, but it's not... Uh, that would have been a better name for it. 235 IS. That's a much, actually a much better Probably name. Probably a much yeah. better name. Um, any thoughts? Torchinsky drove it. Uh, oh, yeah. Jason drove it this week. Uh, he enjoyed it. He, I mean, much like if you like the original one, um, but you thought that it, you know it, it was comically, it was like a, a little toy car with a huge greenhouse. Yeah. Um, they've sculpted that a little bit, so it looks a little bit better. Uh, he thinks the front looks like an old Pontiac Grand uh, Grand Am, which <laughs> I don't <laughs> necessarily agree with, um, but it, the, the grill is similar. Uh, you know, I, I think it's great, and I'm sure that, that for BMW owners, they're going to enjoy it, but uh, I, I'm really curious to try. BMW said this, and we'll say this on air so we can hold, the, hold them to this, that they're going to try to let Jalopnik readers spec out a 2 Series for oh, the press fleet. Cool. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that actually if you get a manual 228 yep. with an M Sport kit, you're actually going to probably have a car that's not as fast. I mean, it's sub 5, 0 to 60, the car is an amazing performer. Yeah. Um, and it handles well on the track, and it, it's neutral. But that, it's the M235, I think, is 52.48, and yeah. the, the, two, the 228 is 50.50. So that car, at a reasonable price, I actually did, I, God, I, what a, I configured it. The configurator's live, and I configure, configured it. Was, it was you configure 40, it? wasn't it? It was, le, it was way less than 40, yeah. Like 30, even with, it was like 34, 36? 34, so, 36, with all the options that you would want. And that is... That is a crazy, if you think that someone's going to charge you for a CLA, and a CLA is a fine car, but if you're going to, you know, sp end up spending 32, 33 on a CLA with a backseat that's like quasi-usable, you might as well get a 228, and it's a much better performer, rear-wheel drive. That's There's a really, that's a good point. I, I you know, it, it's interesting because we think of the fastest one being the one to get. But the good, that was the good thing about the, the um, that four-cylinder is it's a good motor. Mm -hmm. It's, you can eventually probably, you know, I don't know who's making the chips for it. Somebody's making the chips. Oh, absolutely. The chips. Yeah. Take a guess. But anyway, um, it, the, mo the, the great thing about the motor is you're right. It's 50-50, and it also, in the 3 Series at least, it sits completely behind the axle, mm -hmm. the front axle. I think it's probably the same thing in the 2. Um, the diff, did we find out whether the, um, the mechanical diff was a dealer-installed option? Because that's what I heard. Really? Yes. I heard that the, you can get the e-diff. That's mm -hmm. on the M, or the M235i. The e-diff was, was uh, from the factory like that. But if you wanted the mechanical diff, it was a dealer-installed option. No, I did not hear. Um, I heard that, and I think that was confirmed. But um, yeah, yeah, that's that's interesting. It's a fun BMW for for all the crap we've given them is actually s slowly starting to sort of roll out stuff that enthusiasts can get excited about that that maybe is M branded and maybe isn't M branded. Yeah. Like maybe we need to get over like caring so much about M branding and just focus on the better cars that they make that aren't M branded. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't mind driving a 228 IS if it were like the car that was at the show. Yeah, um, great. And hopefully we'll get that in the fleet soon. The Jalopnik uh, spec'd out version. <laughs> yeah, if you're, if you're watching this Matthew Russell, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So Toyota laid one on us, all right? so. Um, we had talked on this show about the Supra, right? The, the mm -hmm. secret Supra that was coming. Well, yeah, there was something like that, but it's not the Supra, it's the FT1. And they kind of kept that secret, right? I mean, they showed that thing off and people went, oh. Yeah, what's now, that? Now, I feel like it's like anticlimactic now, but I was pretty psyched. Well, we knew that there was something coming. We knew that there was supposedly the next Supra. We knew that we had heard it was going to be called the Mirai. We got that way wrong. We yeah. way wrong. Yeah. Where did that name come Mirai, from? I, I saw it on the internet. So <laughs> did you see that on the internet? I just assumed it was correct. Because <laughs> I mean, as you do with the internet, most things are correct on there. But doesn't it mean something in, uh, that, that has something to do with Toyota? 
Probably. Oh, you didn't. I didn't know what yeah, it meant. I just, I'm just like, oh, I gotta write this now because it's got a name. <laughs> high, high level Jalopnik reporting that everyone's <laughs> used to, right there. I think you've just learned how the uh, the reporting sausages are, are made at Jalopnik. Really high <laughs> high quality work there hey. by us. <laughs> But gotta the get the story first. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get it up first. But I liked it. I think it's a really interesting take on a modern GT look. And obviously, there are some cars that it looks like. I don't like it, so... You don't like I it? I don't like it. Oh, what the hell is wrong with it? Uh, and what's wrong with you for not liking it? What's wrong with it? It's, uh, it's ugly. That's the first problem that it's got. I'm sorry? It's, like, it's got... Uh, it's got a face a blind mother could love. Wow. So you're um, not into the, the Formula One It's not Formula One looking. inspired. It's got a big nose, and then it's got two nostrils with fans in it. You know, I, I see that now, and I go, I think I'm going to not look at that part of it. I'm going to look at the rest Don't, of it. You're not going to look at the front end of the car. <laughs> you go around back, it's not any better. It's got a huge hydraulic structure for the thing. For the, the thing. It's called a wing. Wait, it's yeah, for the wing. For that thing in the back. Uh, no, I, I just, think... It doesn't, it doesn't feel like the lights, to me, I know they, smaller lights are good. Okay. But they don't do anything for the design here. It just makes it look like there's no lights, and it just looks like a faceless demon that's going to kill you when wow. you sleep. Um, and I don't care for it. Okay, that's... There you go. You know, it's weird. It is sort of... It does have that problem of modern design where it looks like a cool car has, is in there somewhere. There's something in there. And you have to kind of chisel it out. Right. Like, there's an old 2000 GT inside of something. <laughs> like, inside a box... It's screaming to be let out. <laughs> let me out! <laughs> but yeah. it's not coming. Um, because, the, you know, the, the, the top of the greenhouse and the, uh, the fastback rear looks a little mm -hmm. bit like that. And it also looks like a Bertone concept, right? Probably everything looks like a Bertone concept. Yeah. I don't, but I will, say that, I will say two things that I really, I, the wheels are gorgeous. Yeah. I thought the center lug wheels are great. And I saw a picture earlier today of one that someone had rendered with a Castrol livery, ah. like the Supra JGTC cars. Mm -hmm. it, looked, it looked okay. I didn't hate it. Okay, well here's a question. Shouldn't it have been a Lexus? No. So that's a price thing, and this is where Toyota gets into trouble. Because if that car, you didn't put it with the IDX and the GT4, because it's clearly a more expensive car. Sure. So if it's a Supra, outgoing Supra is eh, $50,000 range, maybe it's seventy five, eighty adjusted for inflation. Okay. Um, now it's, you're, you're sort of edging up on a $100,000 car, and, and that's fine because the Nissan GTR is in that space, but the Nissan GTR is also better than... You know, like on numbers, on paper, it's better than like everything but a Veyron. So <laughs> when you're in like better than everything but a Veyron territory, and I don't think, you know, the LFA isn't even that car. Mm -hmm. So are they going to be able to do a $100,000 version of that car? But Toyota already has an $80,000 car. It's the Land Cruiser. The Land Cruiser base price is $78,000. It's true, yeah. Not that people buy them, but it exists. So there's a precedent for Toyota having a very high-priced car in the lineup. Okay. That so it's is a, only a grand less than the Lexus version of that car. It would be a joint halo. But look at look at um, Acura. The NSX is not a Honda. It's an Acura. I mean, but um, it's never. It was a Honda everywhere but here. But here, right? Exactly. Always, because because no we're, one we, had care, we care about those things. We care. We care about that brand. But it's like a situation. Well, those were all. That was just a sales channel play, right? right. To get to get luxury buyers. Um, but now Akio Toyota is on a kind of a mission to abolish all boring cars from Toyota. Let's see if that works at the lower end. But I think that this is the halo for that on the higher end, and it does have his name on it. It doesn't have Mr. Lexus's name no, on it. it has, no, uh, it doesn't have Billy Lexus. Is that his name Billy Lexus? Uh, Billy, yes. Yeah, Billy Lexus. B-I-L-L-I-E, -L -L -I -E, right? Yes, yeah. Billy Lexus. <laughs> Um, so the answer is no, yes. Well, the answer is yes. It what is, what's it going to be based on? Okay, so BMW, famously, they're going to they're work with Toyota. They're going to get some Toyota tech, and BMW is going to get some sports car. That's what Akio wants. Right. So, but that doesn't have to do with this car. According to the latest, you know, the internet stuff. Actually, they talked to motoring uh, in, what is that? That's uh, Australia, I believe, right? Oh, right, motoring.co.au motoring or whatever. Motoring.co.au, you know, whatever. Um, and and the, who the, the source inside BMW said that the tie-up between BMW and Toyota was going to reflect in the new Z, Z4, not okay. in this car, not in the Supra, or not in the FT1. 
Um, we obviously don't know a thing. Well, then what real. car would be the a new SC four <laughs> hundred? Yeah, the SC yeah. Well, yeah, it would be that whatever that coupe is that we just saw. It would be the what would be above. I don't know. See, this is this is it's it, so far. So, and, we don't, and this is actually what Toyota has done. Yeah. This is the brilliant thing that Toyota has made. They have shown a car that no one we kind of knew was coming, but didn't really know anything about. It dropped on our laps. We all got excited. Raphael fisted it. I mean, we we got <laughs> pumped for it. <laughs> he did. And then fist it. I don't know if you're gonna have to bleep that out, but he he he. It's fist is just another English word. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> and he um and we got excited, and then now we're like. WTF, we don't know what it is. We're going to keep talking about it for for something that cost them no money to make, really, and is in Gran Turismo, and you can go drive it. It has at least bought them another year. If they, don't, if they know what they're doing, they have set a precedent, and they've gotten us talking. If right. they have no clue what they're doing, which I think also might be the case, <laughs> they have a year for us to run around like confused idiots, and they could put different colors on it and take it to SEMA and lower mm -hmm. it, and they've bought another year. But at least they care. Yeah. Four years ago, the crap that Toyota was showing was boring as hell. And now the crap is at least interesting as hell. Yeah. Oh, no, I agree with all that. And, but, but don't you think that Akio Toyota is not going to let Honda put out the NSX without a response? Well, he's got 16 years, right, before the NSX comes out? <laughs> he's he's got right. time. Because guess what? The NSX was not at Detroit. No, it's it been everywhere not. else. Well, the TLX was there. <laughs> That's something. Woo! Um, but no NSX, so what, no NSX. why? Why wasn't the NSX there? I guess because they've had it there the last three years. And, and they, they don't decided that maybe next time they'll bring the real one that right. they're going they, to build. They didn't <laughs> want to answer questions on why the next one is not coming out right. this year. I think that might be. I think that's probably why that All is. All right. So Toyota, what if Toyota had done what uh, Nissan and Kia did? What if they had come out with a 350 horsepower FT86? Would they have gotten the kind of response that they got from the FT1? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think the FT1 is more of just, this is what we can do. Look at this. A turbocharged, you know, 86 slash FRS slash whatever would be something that they're actually going to build. Right. And I think that that would be great. I'd so love to see that. But I don't think that it would have had the same impact or gotten the same response from everybody looking at this halo concept car that's ugly as sin saying, right. uh, you know, oh, wow, that's kind of cool. That's ugly as sin, yeah. according that to you. That was my editorialization. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. ugly as sin. Well, this gets back to something I thought that uh, Jerry, that Jerry Seinfeld said on the... Uh, Jerry. Jerry. Good, good you, Jerry. Call him Jer. you call him Jerry? Jer. No, Jerry, call him Jer. Jer. Jerry. Jerry, Jerry. Jerry, Jerry. By Jerry Seinfeld naturally just did a uh, Ask Me Anything on Jalopnik the other day. That's why uh, we're talking about it. We call it a live because... Cause Ask me, ask me anything is what Reddit does, and oh, we would right. never take any ideas from Reddit ever, Sorry, yeah. um, or anything. Um, so anyway, so yeah, he was talking, he said, you know, the car, sometimes waiting for, because somebody was asking, like, what cars are you, you know, waiting for, what cars are you excited about? Because, you know, waiting for a car is sometimes more exciting than having it. And a, and a 300 horsepower FRS, you know, would be having it, because we know we would be getting it. So the Supra is the wanting, it's yeah. the desire mm -hmm. for, and it's what I think also appeals for the Kia. Like, you know, cars, once the attention span of a car enthusiast, especially on the internet now, is so short that, you know, the NSX it plays into this as well. You see the NSX and you're like, oh, I want it, I want it. Now we don't care anymore. And it hasn't even come out yet. We have moved on beyond the NSX and we might care again when it comes out. But, you know, this, the Supra ish FT1 thing is, is all in the realm of desire. Yeah. Uh, and that's where it's way more fun to be. Mm -hmm. I agree. And that's why this show exists, actually. So that's, uh, that's good, to, good to hear. All right. So, um, what else? So there were a lot of like sports sedans that we're gonna, we could gloss over, the BMW M's, you know, or sports coupes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the the M3 and the M4. Um, Lexus did the RCF. Yes. Um, you know, Infinity. I like did the RCF. The, He's crazy. I'm Shut not, up. I'm not crazy. That car's ugly. All right. So no, but, but this goes back to this goes back. I didn't to even Toyota. go look. I, I should full disclosure. I didn't go look at the <laughs> look at the <laughs> RCF because it was. Ugh. But this is interesting. It goes back to Lexus now wants to have a factory tuner brand, which right. F F Sport, all that stuff. What does F and F Sport mean to you guys right now? Because to me, I think it's a little bit of a void. And um, I know you know AMG means something, and BMW M means something. But Everyone has that now, though, right? And so they Nismo have, is lear you know, we're sort of learning what Nismo means, but... All, it seems like all the manufacturers, because BMW started, so everyone does that first, right? So they have M, then they have M Sport. Right. So then you have F and F Sport. Cadillac has V and V Sport. 
Um, Audi has S line though. S and S line. I thought it was pronounced slime. Slime. Oh, slime. Oh, slime. S and I was RS. wrong all those all these years. Because even S is now, I guess, the S Sport. M-sport. Actually, yeah, it is. S so is the S port because RS is. I, I don't know what any of them mean. Well, basically, it, <laughs> means that, it means that they want more money out of the yeah. buyer, and you can say, well, I just want, I don't need all that performance crap. I just want it to look like it has all that stuff, and it has a little badge. Mm-hmm. That's, so that's the sport stuff, the, right. the sport line. But like the, the tuner line, that where there, it's actually a performance car, how can Lexus stand out? What is it like? And, and maybe they haven't even defined this. How do, what are they in relationship to AMG is sort of the German muscle car, you know, uh, M, M is the, I mean, now it's the, the German muscle car. <laughs> I think they're all trying to, well, the thing is, they were all so distinct at the beginning, right? Yeah. M was a all-around, perfectly honed machine. Mm-hmm. Audi was, you know, had all-wheel drive and an engine that was miles ahead of the front wheels. Wow. And it was far No, it's front. true, you're yeah. right. And then... Um, AMG would just do burnouts all the time. <laughs> but yes. now Audi's moved the engines back, BMWs have gotten unbelievably powerful, and AMG has all-wheel drive. Yeah. So they're that's all true. the same thing. Okay. So if Lexus tried to be maybe old school AMG, yeah, huge the burnout power machine. that can't go around a corner. I mean maybe that's it, but maybe? Well well we'll see. I don't know. I mean that's just a, a question because um, it is an unknown. I mean, right. everybody else is sort of known, and they've yes, they've changed over the years. But I mean, F, F doesn't really mean anything. And the I, the ISF um, was sort of was like a little was muscly. I mean, it was more of a muscle car. It was more like the and the AMG. I hear car. they can be challenging to drive. <laughs> yes, in the wet. they can. Yes, I've in heard the that wet. as well. Yes, yes, yeah. there have been there have been many cases of uh, of people taking them uh, into the weeds. I think it's kind of an anti-Acura though at this point too. They can do that because Acura, like you, like a TLX type, at, like type R, like you would- Type S. Type S. Mm. I mean, you kind of laugh at the notion. It's like, I haven't gotten fat. So when I'm back home, I like to walk around, you know, and see people that I've run into. So they, from high school, and it's like, <laughs> I haven't gotten fat yet. Like it's coming, I'm losing my hair, but I haven't gotten fat yet. And Acura has kind of gotten fat and boring when they used to make the Integra. And can you imagine being a Lexus salesman like 20 years ago? Like you have like, an, or 15 years ago, you have like an SC430 coming and they have, a, <laughs> a, they have an Integra and they have mm-hmm. an NSX. And now Lexus actually, they're not like, Lexus doesn't build an Integra and they don't really, well they have an LFA, so they do have an NSX. Yeah. But they have much better cars. Um, they have more exciting, more interesting luxury cars, so they can they right. can take a walk, they can take advantage of it. Yeah. And so why not? I actually think I think the spindle grill is kind of interesting. I think it's unique, and I think the RCF looks good. So yeah. I think it'll do well. Cool, I agree. All right, one one very quickly, Infinity Eau Rouge, anything? Best paint at the auto show. Best paint. Hundred the percent. There I love you go. It. Okay. Um, all right. What are what about the 911 Targa? I swear, it's right there. See, it says 911. Because it, it has the Porsche coolest Targa. roof. All right, let's talk about the roof. Coolest roof. Coolest roof. That's all I got. It's got a cool roof. And so on the rear, it's, it's the Cabrio, it's right? really neat. But it's got, on the rear deck, instead of having nothing, it's right. got the glass attached to it, and then right. the glass lasers up. Then it's got the roll bar, and part of the roll bar folds out of the way, so then the roof has to go through. It's so complicated, and it's going to break, but it's so cool. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's like German, it's like Porsche's cup holders. Because yes. they're totally over-engineered and completely useless. Right. Because they pop out and they come for like a mile around and they had to engineer it so it comes from the footwell to go up through the dashboard. And they were like, you. screw you, Americans, <laughs> with your stupid coffee, and now i got to right. make this thing. And of course they hired the best guys to come in and design that thing to it's come the, around. I think it's the same, because the Targa is like, they need, we need a Targa, but we have to make it the most complicated possible over-engineered way yeah. to make this car. I, I'm actually do. really, really happy that the Targa looks like a traditional Targa Me and too. doesn't isn't just some weird roof that slides off in a weird yeah, way. Big sunroof? I don't need a big sunroof Big sunroof. Sun yeah. It's just a big yeah. sunroof. It's a Targa. Like, a Targa needs that, you know, the bar, mm-hmm. like, a sil- it's, it's silver in most cases. I think, it's, I I think it's always silver. It's always silver. Car. You can't get in a black. Right. But you can buy a black Targa with black wheels and a red interior, or you can get a brown one. There you go. Oh, I hear they're getting a brown one for the press fleet. So hopefully one of us will get to drive that. Because of course they are. Th- that's, that's the, the rumor yeah. uh, from the person who orders the car. So probably not a rumor at all. But <laughs> fact. So that's going to be exciting. And that's like Porsche, man. Porsche, you can tell a car company is doing well because they're like, eh, screw it. Weird looking, awesome, robotic Targa. That's <laughs> yeah. our show at 911. Oh, we've also got this small car that we're going to sell a billion of and make a trillion dollars off of. So <laughs> right. yeah, why not? Screw it, Targa. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. And it's great how they priced it too. It's like $500 less than the convertible. 
So if you want your roof to go all the way down, just pay $500 more and you don't have any roof. But <laughs> if you want some roof, it's $500 less. I so mean, for the Porsche buyer on a budget that wants an open top, the Targa is the way to go. Porsche is, has lost its mind, but it knows how to make money. Yes. Um, and that's all that matters about them. I mean, and they make, you know, I'm sure the Targa is going to be great to drive anyway. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Um, are they going to make, they're not going to make a uh, Cayman Targa. Maybe. I heard, I heard they're making a Cayman Roadster <laughs> coming up. No roof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they come up around the same time as that Boxster Coupe that I've been hearing about for a while. Boxster Coupe. Yeah. So, uh, all right, so that's, that's all I got on the list. What am I missing? The Z06? Yes. I see, <laughs> yeah. I said we were going to come back. Do you yeah. see? Yeah, you yeah, remember yeah. the You thing? were doing a callback there. All right, so Z06. Um, Leo Parente, um, who is also has a show on this channel, says it's a little bit <laughs> he overdone. Does? He's not here, is Shakedown. he? Shakedown. He said he just thinks it's a little over the top. Um, too many add-on things and stack, stick on things, but I'm sure it's going to be badass to drive. And they had to make it yellow because it's the tie-in to the racing team. Right. Because they also showed the C7R racing right. car. What do you think about me? All of this? Oh, so Z06. I, I mean, I'm looking at you. You're and looking talking. at me. I know you're looking I'm gonna at me. I'm going to stop talking, and then you're going to start talking. I understand how conversations. Okay, work. I just just wanted to make sure. Um, the conversation never stops. <laughs> <laughs> but so the Z06 now it seems more to be. Z06 and ZR1 combined into one car, right? So they couldn't do, I talked to Taj Jukter, the chief engineer of the Corvette while I was there. Name dropper. <coughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> no, I don't want to brag about it too much. But he was saying, we asked about if we could do a naturally aspirated, why isn't it a direct injection LS7? And they could not get the power out of an NA of engine. So they couldn't do that. If they wanted to do an NA, mo NA spinner motor, he said, it would have ended up with possibly a power decrease. And you can't have that. You couldn't have that. You couldn't be asking for however much they're going to ask more, like 20, 30 grand more for Z06, and it have 485 horsepower. Right, Which right. the new one has 460. So it had to be supercharged. But they had to do an automatic because... Was there another reason that they couldn't do the, the seven liter? They couldn't, it couldn't meet all the emissions regs okay. and everything at the same time as making more power. They could make more power without meeting the regs, but if they don't meet the regs, they don't have an engine. That's, that's a good point. Right. right, right, right. So they had to use the new, like the supercharged ELT1. It's the first supercharged engine that'll have cylinder deactivation, which is pretty neat, I nice. think. 864? Um, <laughs> V864, like in the Seville yeah. from, the, from the 80s? <laughs> but they'll have, so it'll have that, but it'll also be an eight-speed eight speed automatic torque converter. 8-speed automatic and no manual? No, there's manual. Okay. It's manual standard, 8-speed automatic is, is uh, optional, and they're very um, adamant, I want to say, that it's going to be very, very good. Yeah. Uh, it better be at least as good as the ZF box. If it's not as good as the ZF transmission, then what's the point Why of it? Why bother? Why bother with it? Uh, but I think it looks really, really good. And I think that the certain things, like the Z07 pack with the carbon brakes, uh, the, power, the Sport Cup 2 tires, the Pilot Sport Cups. And then it's got an adjustable wicker out back that you can get an extra inch. And they made it clear because if you put it all the way up and it was body cord, you wouldn't be able to see out the back, apparently, is oh. what I was told wow. when they gave me the walk around of the car. But it's, it's badass. It's badass. Yeah, I mean, the last Z06 was badass and dangerous. And this one, I mean, dangerous. I mean, it's just a car that you need to respect. Right. This one looks like... Um, a little bit more, you know, GTRE. I'm gonna say yeah. if that's a thing, where you can the the electronics have have um, gotten to the point where you can drive it fast and it mm -hmm. will rein you in and do all that stuff and still yeah. not be completely uh, nannyish and stop your uh, stop the fun. I, I, the only problems I have with it now they have so it's 60% stiffer than the old car, but they have a target top now, so it's got a removable roof. But you have to remove it yourself. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't no fold like, into the back. Or like, a, like a caveman. Yeah, like, <laughs> like a damn caveman. <laughs> like a damn I move roof. I take put <laughs> but, on the... So with that, it's 6% stiffer. Without the roof on, it's 20% yeah, stiffer. That, by the way, you could take that out, Ian. No, my caveman. No, no, go ahead. Okay, you. so it's 60% stiffer with the roof on, 20% with it off. But why didn't they just fix the roof? This is supposed to be the hardcore Corvette. The Z06 is the Corvette, not for Corvette guys. The Z06 was always the Corvette for guys that got it. Is what I thought. People that get, people that those are not Corvette guys. No, so the, Z0, the ZR1 is the high performance Corvette, right? Right. The sure. high performance road going Corvette. The Z06 was the track vet. Yes. So 
you want the you, an automatic, you get a car with an automatic transmission now, a removable roof that goes on the track. You want, if you can't operate a manual transmission, you can't operate a Corvette Z06, as far as I've always been concerned. Right, right. So well, it should be that. I think this, this car should be bare bones, hardcore. It's not the same, what I said when I wrote it, it's not the same essence of the right. Z06. It's a different, it's an evolved Z06 again. So well, it's been, I mean, what you said thing. before, they've made it the Z06 and the ZR1. Right, and so it's a bridging, it's because they... Is there are, a ZR2 coming? Well, there's claims that there was no ZR1 under development. When I talked to Taj, it's a 700 horsepower? Well, it's 8,000 8, horsepower, but he said nothing's impossible, which means literally nothing, but there could be a car. Yeah. I, I will say this. We suspect that the original Corvette drawings of the 2014 Corvette that Jalotnik had like a year early, 13 months early actually, um, was actually the ZR1. And if you look, it looks a lot like the Z06 that we see now with a couple slight differences. Now that over time could have changed, so it's hard to say. I think there's still room for ZR1. Yeah. Um, I hope there's a ZR1, but Travis knows better. I guess it depends on the pricing too. I mean, if this one is 100, ZR1 would be 120 or 130. I was told on pricing for this one that we'll be pleasantly surprised. 86. So 86, yeah. Well, let's say the last car was about a 20 grand Delta between base Corvette and Z6. I don't know what that means. No, you're in the, <laughs> you mean difference? Yeah, a Delta. A Delta. Not an airline, but, <laughs> but a, uh, the, a difference thing? between... It's like, yeah, it's that, whatever that is. No, I hear you. It's yeah. So if you figure $20,000 again, you yes. think if you're a base Z06, it would be around 77, yeah. 80 grand. But then the Z28 is... Why would you get a Z28? Yeah. A Z28 well, is $75,000. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, there's your hardcore sports car, but then that's you don't true. get... A but Corvette, it's not going to be as fast a... as the Corvette. Yeah, it's yeah. Kind of, but the... See, the, the problem is, G, the, the base problem is GM keeps having to do kind of these one-off things. The Z28 was like a Mark Royce, like, Mark Royce is the, the, now the number two at, at GM. Like, I really want to do this, so let's do this, and how can we do it? Right. And the engineers sort of figured it out, and they actually were going to call it something else, and they had to, like, rush. They changed the name of the car, like, two days before the car came out, and they made it a Z28 again. And It was called the uh, the Mirai. What was it? Yeah, the, Mur <laughs> the, the, the Murray. Toyota Murray. <laughs> Well, I think they also made the Z28 because that's when they realized, shit, we got, we got all these LS7s and we got nowhere to put them now because we're not going to be using any version of this engine in the next right. Z06. So we got to do something. Let's do something with those engines yeah. rather than, than not, do, not something. do something with them, yeah. which was a good idea. That was smart of them to so do something. Yeah. Well, all right. We've, we've burned through all the cars that I wanted to talk about. Any cars that you saw that you want to talk about? There was no Via Cross. Uh, every there, year I want an Isuzu Via Cross <laughs> type car. When will Isuzu come back to the Detroit Auto Show? I heard they were going to be there this year. They just yeah, didn't, they didn't, really? they didn't show up. They didn't make it. No. That's a car. Actually, you know, what the, you know what the car that I like most that we have not spoken about? And that's Isuzu Impulse. Small, not the Isuzu Impulse, although great. Dejaro Design, beautiful car. <laughs> um, I really like the AMG GLA 45. Oh, that car we did not talk about that. Is like, you know, why would you get that car? Like, it's a little league crossover, but it's great. It's like a hot hatch. Like, they've yes. finally, they have finally done away with any artifice. That these cars are anything more than hatchbacks with like a quarter inch of lift and a plastic body cladding. Like, like crossovers are no longer SUVs. This is purely a hot hatchback. And if you reframe it that way. We should all be way more excited about the GLA 45 than we are. I, I'm with you completely on that. It mm -hmm. is. It is the. Um, I'm going to say it's the STI that we don't get anymore. Yeah, it's the hatchback STI. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's a great only point. Only ten grand more than, than only ten grand more. That's about fifty something, right? Fifty. I mean, an STI was always traditionally yeah, in the true. It's in high thirties, early forties. I mean, it's in the 50s. Okay, it's a little more. I mean, it's like a little more luxe version of the STI. But it's STI for maybe as you grow out of your STI, yeah. maybe you don't want to be seen as the STI guy anymore in your, you know, what, mid 80s. I don't know. You're, what, not, how still, you you're not still sleeping with a Japanese body pillow or anything like that? <laughs> yes, like exactly. the average STI buyer? I kid. Love you're not guys. dating a hologram anymore? <laughs> um, you've, you've grown into actual women. That's that's nice. Um, but if you imagine if you lowered a GLA 45, it would just be an A45 AM. So there's probably going to be people we'll here be that would do that. Oh, yeah. They're going to lower the GLA 45, take the GL badge off, and they'll pretend I, they have an A45. I want to see them rally it. I want to see that somebody would be great. rally Oh, my God. That'd yeah. be fantastic. That'd I think awesome. there's a ton of things you could do to that car. Rentec could go crazy. Oh, you could yeah. build oh, a crazy RSQ like off-road of the way you kind of want the RSQ5 to be when you see it. You could make a really low drag car. You could... A GLA 65. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With a V12, yes. that'd be great. Engine in the back. Oh yeah. my god, or, yes. No, what about two engines? Two engines. One in the back, one in the front, or two, one on each side. Well, one, you could do one of the 12s <laughs> transverse, 
I'm talking two, well, we do two sixes. And you, you do, do the three 12 point, in the back, that's, that's, uh, that's not. All right, no, go ahead. We do two 3.2 sixes. Yeah. And then you call it GL65 because Mercedes' math never adds up anyway because yeah. it's always the, the cylinder displacement. The, the displacement's never I, the same. As I'm the, with you on that. Maybe. No, I, I think that's, you know, I, I, I forgot which, who said this. It might have been car and driver or somebody who said that, you know, if you pay for half a Mercedes, you get half a Mercedes. I think that's, <laughs> that's kind of true, but, like, I, I like the, the fact that they're doing the hatch that we never get, mm -hmm. even though you have to buy, you know, have to get the sort of raised version to get it which is fine. Yeah, it's closer. Yeah. Um, and on that note, I think we're done with After Drive today. That's the Detroit Auto Show. Everything you need to know, you've already heard because these guys were here. <laughs> Travis Sikulski, deputy. 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 Deputy editor. <laughs> and uh, Matt Hardigree, editor-in-chief of Jalopnik. Thanks, guys. Great. After Drive, that's it. Don't forget, slash drive.tv, at drive on Twitter, facebook.com slash drive TV. Drive.jalopnik. Drive.jalopnik.com, Instagram.com slash drive TV. Um, and Pinterest? You know, MySpace.pinterest.net. Okay. Dot, what? I don't know. <laughs> dot biz. Drive biz. Dot biz. <laughs> exactly. Hit us up on AIM. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a toothpaste? ASL. Is that the cavity ASL. creeps? Or that was Crest? Crest was a cavity creeps. We weren't, we're not old enough to know what you're talking about. <laughs> See ya.